Hey, this is Zach Log the Great. So this this video is going to be kind of tough to record. It's a little more personal than usual, um, and I've said before that I don't talk about myself a lot uh, because. I don't think I'm that interesting, but I hope that my ideas are. Um, but in this case, the ideas and my personal life are intertwined. There's no way to cut it apart. The person I'm talking to is probably never going to see this. Uh, but there are probably a lot of people out there in a situation kind of like mine. And maybe uh, this will be helpful for you, if you're one of those people. So. <sighs> if the person I'm talking to does see this, you know who you are. Um, so, we've had some serious disagreements for several years now, uh, particularly about politics. Um, and there's a certain asymmetry to this that I, I don't think you're aware of. I don't think you really understand. You see, the thing is, you are friends and allies with people who hate me and wish to physically harm me, or at best, leave me unemployed and homeless. I tried telling you about this a while ago. I think it was about four years, four or five years. And you dismissed it as paranoid. In fact, I, um, I think you uh, called my wife because uh, you were concerned about my mental health, which she was quite upset by that. That was troubling. Um, but the, the hatred, this uh, willingness to lash out at people who hold the wrong ideas is, is a lot clearer now and harder to deny. But people who insist on denying reality can ignore just about anything. So, may as well start from the top. The most obvious, the most uh, you know, clear, the most significant case of recent years. Um, Hillary Clinton, when she was campaigning for president, um, publicly, and to great applause from the people she was addressing, called me and, you know, people like me, uh, deplorable and irredeemable. To be specific, she said that accounted for about a quarter of the country. Deplorable and irredeemable. What does irredeemable mean? What do we do with people who are irredeemable? You can't bring them back. You can't save them. You don't try to change them. That's what irredeemable means. 
What do you do with those people? You cast them out. You cut them off. And if they pose any threat whatsoever, you destroy them. That is what irredeemable means. No sense trying to change anything. They are past saving. Cut them off. And that is what Hillary Clinton, who was the leader of the Democratic Party, called us. She said we were irredeemable. She said one quarter of this country needs to be cut off and cast out. And she didn't use those terms, but that's what it means. So, you know, we could take a step down. We could look at slightly less uh, important, slightly less powerful figures. Not, you know, presidential candidates, but, you know, celebrities and, uh, you know, people who are in our news media. The recent case of the uh, Covington Catholic boys is rather illustrative. And just as a reminder, I am of exactly the same class as them. I am white. I am male. Um, I am opposed to abortion. And I support President Trump, or at least I support the agenda he ran on. And what did we see in this case? What were these people who are, at the very least, your political allies say? What did we see from them? Absolute hatred the most vicious bile imaginable was poured out on a group of teenaged boys. There were gruesome calls for violence. Many of these were from high-profile celebrities and from, you know, important figures in the, you know, left-wing news media. There were literal fantasies about mass murder against a group of teenagers. And what was their crime? They were white. And they were insufficiently deferential towards a minority. I'm in exactly the same class. Everything they wished on those boys, they would wish on me if I caught their attention. But we can continue, you know, down a little bit more. Um, ordinary, you know, everyday people, not rich, famous, not politically powerful. Uh, Antifa protesters uh, seems like they've been relatively quiet recently, but for at least a year, two years, they were you know committing low level of violence against you know people who hold opinions roughly like mine, just constantly. Um, they would assault people for the crime of wanting to hear someone speak, wanting to hear someone speak who has opinions that are a lot like mine. <laughs> Most of them were significantly more moderate than mine. If, you know, a right-wing speaker uh, wants to go on a college campus, if Ann Coulter, if Milo Yiannopoulos uh, you know, wants to speak at a college campus, they need to hire a significant amount of security to protect them from the kind of threats they will get. You know, uh, there's nothing comparable to this that I'm aware of for, you know, the, for a leftist. They can walk 
any college campus in the on any college campus in the country, they're fine. They can go to the most right wing, you know, college in the country, uh, to you know, conservative Christian colleges, to Liberty University. No one threatens them. They have no real fear of their life. Uh, mobs have shouted at Republican politicians, uh, driving them out of restaurants. At the um, incitement of uh, Congress, Congresswoman Maxine Waters, may I add. They, they shout at them and they drive them out of public spaces. Just a few months ago, a, a, a mob of uh, <laughs> protesters uh, was you know, yelling outside of Tucker Carlson's home while he was doing his show. His wife was in the home alone. Thank God his kids were not there. But his wife was in the home alone. One of these psychopaths actually repeatedly slammed himself against the door. She had no idea what was going on. She thought she was being robbed. These, these are the tactics that are embraced, that are endorsed by your allies, by your political friends. And you know what the difference is between those people and me? Between those speakers, those politicians, between Tucker Carlson and me? There's two differences. They are more well-known, and most of them, if the left leftists were actually capable of hearing their views rather than going into an insane rage whenever they open their mouths, most of them, their actual views are significantly more socially acceptable than a lot of things I think. That's not... That's not a... It's not a reason of principle. That's not. Uh, that's not would not form a principled objection to doing the same thing to me. It's a uh, a reason of convenience. I'm not significant enough to merit that yet. But if I ever were significant enough, they would be quite happy to do the same to me. To my wife. To my sons terrorize us in our home because we think the wrong things. I mean, the stories of, you know, violence against people, you know, who's for just for wearing a the, you know, red Make America Great Again hat are too frequent to, you know, list them all. There's been numerous instances where people were physically assaulted just for that. <laughs> Not made-up, bullshit, hate-monger stories like Jussie Smollett's. No. Actual violence. And, you know... Maybe they don't want to engage in physical violence. There are many who, you know, will eschew, you know, physical violence against their political opponents. But the number of SJWs who engage in economic terrorism is far, far higher, and they wield a lot of power these days. Uh, economic, what do I mean by economic terrorism? I mean, if they find out... Um, if they can get the information on someone who politically disagrees with them, they will make sure they are unemployed and unemployable. They will economically destroy them. A recent and pretty awful case of this uh, includes a uh, paramedic who works in a rural area, who, which is you know desperately understaffed. Um, he you know, made an appearance on a, on a podcast, said, 
said the wrong things, held the wrong opinions. Huffington Post tried to get him fired. You know what happens if this place, if he gets fired? The people in the area he live in have one less paramedic. People could literally die because of this. The company of Google openly discriminates against employees uh, with right-wing opinions. Uh, they fired James Damore for mild criticism of feminist ideas. I, to say he is more, far more moderate than me is a, a, a huge understatement. Academia, the, the university, is absolutely toxically hostile to people who hold right-wing opinions. I mean, you, if it becomes known that you, you know, have these views, you cannot get a job at all outside of the hard sciences. And even the hard sciences are slipping now. You know, people, you know, a comp scientists with stellar accomplishments are having their, you know, lives wrecked for one stupid joke. <sighs> Businesses can, you know, declaredly, can openly discriminate against Christians or, you know, right-wingers with no consequence whatsoever. But if you even hypothetically are not going to serve a homosexual wedding, you're going to get death threats from across the country that are sufficient to shut you down for weeks. Ask Kevin and Crystal O'Connor about that. What do these people want for people like me? A not insignificant number of them would like to would like to have me dead. Many, many more want me unemployed and unemployable. Kicked out of our house, you know, me and my family living under living under a bridge and begging for food. When we were growing up together, I looked up to you so much. I don't think you ever knew. I don't think you ever really understood how much I thought of you then. And so, I mean, this hurts all the more. You chose these people. You choose to walk, you choose to make common cause with these people. Not people who disagree with me. Who cares? Who cares if they disagree with me? I will happily discuss, I will happily argue out my beliefs with anyone who disagrees with me who's willing to engage in conversation. You choose to be friends, to be allies, to make common cause with people who want to destroy me. And it's not two ways. It's not the same. You can find people like this 
all the way up to the top on the political left. I think I've illustrated that. But you, you don't see the same thing on the right. They're, they want to win politically, but, you know, they, they don't want to kill people. They see no particular need to have people, you know, disemployed for holding the wrong opinions. I, I will admit there is a, uh, there is a small minority, a very small uh, group um, that I think might actually be willing to embrace violence. I think I've seen some people like that. They are a tiny fringe at the moment. These are the people you chose. Why? Why are you friends with people that would like to see me dead? And what would it finally take to convince you to walk away from this? I love you. And your friends want me dead. God be with you.